Hi, welcome to Chemical Bonding Part 1. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to be talking about the basics of chemical bonding. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is a chemical bond, why do elements bond, a review of electronegativity, forming versus breaking chemical bonds, and the octet rule. A chemical bond is a force that holds groups of two or more atoms together and makes them function as a unit. Now the question is, why do elements bond? Atoms of elements naturally bond together in search of a more stable electron configuration. The breaking of old bonds and the forming of new bonds accounts for the majority of chemical reactions. Bonding is also the simultaneous attraction of two nuclei for the same electrons. This is a reference to electronegativity, which is found on table S of your reference table. Electronegativity is the measured attraction of a nucleus for electrons involved in chemical bonding, specifically our valence electrons. How much a nucleus of one atom attracts or does not attract electrons from a neighboring atom. Metals in general tend to have low electronegativity values. For example, lithium has an electronegativity value of 1, while nonmetals have high electronegativity values. For example, bromine is three. And here is a snapshot from your reference table, table S. And if I look at them, I can see here's lithium and it has an electronegativity of one, like we saw over here. Beryllium, another metal, has an electronegativity of 1.6, while hydrogen, which is a nonmetal, has a much higher electronegativity of 2.2. Chemical bond formation. In general, when a bond is formed, energy is released. The more energy released, the stronger the bond. To break a bond, energy must be absorbed. Now the question is, why do atoms bond in the first place? Atoms bond to achieve a lower potential energy. In other words, increased stability. So if I look at this graph over here, I have isolated hydrogen atoms at the top. These are very, very unstable. We know that hydrogen is basically a proton and one electron as an atom. In order to get their so-called full octet, they need two electrons in their outermost shell. So if these two isolated hydrogen atoms come together to form a much more stable hydrogen molecule, it will be much more stable. And as this process occurs, energy is released. So energy is released as this bond forms and we form a much more stable molecule. Now let's talk about the octet rule. To achieve a state of low potential energy where our molecules are much more stable, the atoms seek to obtain eight valence electrons. This is known as the octet rule. Atoms of a particular element want to have the same number of electrons as the noble gas closest to that element on the periodic table. Noble gases have very stable electron arrangements as shown by their high ionization energies, lack of an electronegativity value, which means they're not trying to gain any electrons because they're already stable, and a general lack of reactivity. In other words, inertness. So how do we see this? Here is a calcium atom. It has an electron configuration of 2882, as we see on our reference tables. If it loses these outermost valence electrons, it becomes an ion of Ca plus 2 and now has an electron configuration of 288. This electron configuration matches that of argon, which is much more stable. Similar situation with oxygen. An oxygen atom has an electron configuration of 2,6. If it gains two electrons in this outermost shell, it becomes an oxygen ion with an overall charge of minus 2 and now has an electron configuration of 2,8, which matches that electron configuration of neon. So we can see in both of these elements, they're either trying to lose electrons or gain electrons to have an electron configuration closest to the nearest noble gas. And we're going to see that trend over and over again as we continue our study of bonding. So what did you learn? We went over what is a chemical bond. 
We talked about why do elements bond. We looked at electronegativity. We talked about forming versus breaking chemical bonds. And then finally at the end, the octet rule. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.